In this video, I will show you exactly how you can authenticate your users through MetaMask. Let's say that you are building a dApp and in your dApp, you want your users to log in through MetaMask, to authenticate themselves through MetaMask. I will show you how you can do it very, very quickly. Number two, I will show you how to create a user profile in your database. And by the way, you don't need to have a server for this. It's all serverless. It's all very, very simple. You just need to watch this video. And in a few minutes, you will have your database already running where when people log in through MetaMask, you add them to the database automatically, which means that you can then add more data to their user profile. For example, let's say that you have a DAP. The user logs in with MetaMask. They authenticate with MetaMask. And you want to ask them for an email, for a nickname, for a picture, profile picture, whatever you want to ask your user about and save it in the database. You can do it very, very simply by following this tutorial. And... This is very important because at the end of the day, you do want to have a user profile whenever somebody logs in. Maybe you want to send them some kind of notifications. Maybe you want to send them something else. You need the email, for example. But to do that, you need a user, user profile. I think you understand the point and the problem we're trying to solve. Now, the simplest way to do this is serverless because you don't want to be running your own server to do it. It just takes a lot of time. It's completely unnecessary. Instead, you go to moralis.io. You sign up and here you can create your own server. So you will not be seeing this, but when you click to add new server, you can name your server, you can select the region for your server and you can select the network, whether you want to work on mainnet, testnet or local dev chain. Let's for this, uh, for this app create a mainnet server. So when you create a Morales server, you will see something like this, all right? And this is a server already ready for you to interact with. Now. Something very important is that if you click on dashboard right here, you will see this, all right? And by the way, when you click on the dashboard for the first time, you need to log in with, uh, with these details, all right? Uh, but then you will see this and you will see that right now you don't have any users, you don't have any roles, you don't have any sessions. This is your database, all right? So you log in on Moralis.io, you create a server, you already have a database, all right? It's empty right now. Now, let's go into JavaScript. And let's now add the code to authorize, sorry, not authorize, to authenticate the user and to add a user to our uh, database. And then we will be playing around a bit. Now, first and foremost, guys, of course, in order to make this work, you need to import a few scripts. Um, so if you use the link below and you go to GitHub, you will see um, the source code of this whole app. So you can just copy paste this. Let me make the size a bit smaller so you can see. But these are the two scripts we need. Number one, it is Web3 and number two, Morales. All right. This is number one. Number two, we need to authenticate with our server. Our app needs to tell, we need to tell Morales that um, uh, we are using the Morales server and we need to tell exactly which server. So create a new script, script within the body and just do this. So as you can see, we write moralis.initialize and we give it the application ID. How do you find application ID? You go to your admin panel here in Morales, you click on view details and you find application ID. So this is the only thing that is needed. And then you paste it here and then you also need moralis.server URL. You need to tell Morales SDK in your JavaScript which server to talk to. And of course, you just copied this, all right? And uh, that's it. Um, let's create a button because this is literally half of the app. <laughs> We've already built half of the app. Uh, let's build a button uh, where we have an on-click uh, event, on-click function, uh, which will be called log uh, login. And we write login with MetaMask. And uh, here below, we will be creating a function, login, like this. Uh, very standard, very simple. Let's just ensure that it works. Login clicked like this. So if I close this and now I open the page and, uh, uh, and show you, let me see, bam, bam. I refresh it. I, I see the button, as you can see, login with MetaMask. Now, something to note is that I am running a local host. So, you need to spin up your local host to develop. Uh, let's see. Bam, 
Okay, so this works. I can click login and I see logged in, login clicked, very good. Uh, the second step is of course to actually do something, <laughs> not just print the console log. Uh, now, the way we authenticate is very simple. We create a variable. So this is the user. Uh, num step number one, as you can see, very simple. Step number two is morales.web3.authenticate. Okay, that's it. That's everything that, that is needed. But this function is um, asynchronous. Basically, when you authenticate, when you write dot authenticate, you need to wait for a user to accept in his or her MetaMask. So that's why you need to write await. It's not instant. It is a, when you write this, you need to wait for the user. So you write await. And when you do that, you also need to ensure that this function is defined as asynchronous as well. Because in JavaScript, when you have a function that calls a synchronous function, it in, it in itself <laughs> becomes asynchronous. So just write like this. And then we can just check uh, if user, we can type uh, console log user. Okay, so if we are able to get it back, we can just um, print the user to the console. Uh, very, very simple, very straightforward, very easy. And uh, let's see the result. I refresh. I click login with the MetaMask. Uh, as you can see, I get a signature request. And this basically means that I'm just signing a message. I'm signing a message in order to prove that I actually own the address because Morales needs to know that. I sign. And as you can see, I get the user right here. Bam. Um, and what's important is that if I go to my user uh, database, I see an entry here. And as you can see, it, it has its own ID. It has uh, everything that we need updated at. We do have information about the address, all right? So when the user logs in, we get the address already. We get information about the signature. Basically, you know, I signed the message in order to prove that I own this address so that you can only log in using your own address that you control. When you, uh, Morales needs to know that. And most importantly, now that we have this, we can start playing around. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, let's uh, say that uh, I want to add some uh, information to the user profile, maybe a nickname, maybe favorite color, whatever. It's very simple. As you see, we have the user and I can do user.set. Uh, nickname, let's say <laughs> I want to set his nickname to Vitalik, like this. Um, we, I can do user that set uh, favorite color blue, like this. And if I call user that save, it will be saved. So let's save this yet again, like this. Uh, I close, I refresh, I click login. I sign, uh, let's see, I click login, I sign, and I get this. Uh, and now if I refresh, and I go to the right, you see I have nickname, Vitalik, in my database, and I have favorite color, blue. So as you can see, we've done all the three things that we wanted to do. The first thing was to Authenticate with MetaMask, we've done that. We have now a session running. You can even go to the session and you can see that we do have a logged in session running with our server. We have a user profile by just logging in through MetaMask and we can add extra, extra data to it. So it's very, very simple. Um, or I guess, as you can see, uh, this, is, uh, this was like a few minutes and uh, you can now go ahead and play around. I really recommend you in order to learn this for real, Go ahead and play around, do more things, add more variables, remove variables, see what you can come up with. And I'll see you all in the next episode.